After an unexpected year-long delay, the Open Championship is finally headed to Royal St. George's and the Channel Coast of England. Royal St. George's was actually the first club outside of Scotland to host the Open Championship, and this will mark the 15th time that it's had the honor of doing so. We're 10 years removed from Darren Clark's popular win back in 2011, which means that for many of us, this week will serve as something of an introduction to Royal St. George's. Whether you're planning a golf trip to England to see it for yourself, or simply planning to do a little armchair spectating, here's seven things to see at Royal St. George's. Like most members of the Open Rota, the clubhouse at Royal St. George's is a small-scale museum featuring the history of this great club. It's also a rather traditional affair, with a jacket and tie required for gentlemen after 11 a.m. After your morning tea time, be sure to allow a few extra minutes to peruse the memorabilia inside. And by all means, don't skip lunch in the dining room. But more on that later. The par 4 fourth hole is likely to get plenty of airtime during the Open at Royal St. George's. That's because it's home to one of the largest and deepest bunkers in all of Britain. Clearing the pit will likely be of no concern to most of the competitors, but for those visiting Royal St. George's during a golf trip to England, the Himalaya Bunker is a formidable sight. Find it, and your scorecard is likely to pay the price. The sixth hole at Royal St. George's, known as Maiden, is one of the most famous par threes in all of golf. But the version of the Maiden seen in the Open Championship is very different from the one that earned such a claim. The hole is named after a tall sand dune which once stood between the green and tee, making the tee shot an entirely blind one. If you're picturing the famous Dell Hole at Lahench Golf Club, you're not too far off. Eventually, critics of blind par threes won the day. The tee box was relocated, and a far less intriguing version of the Maiden was born. The one upside is that the sand dune now provides an excellent vantage point for spectators when the Open comes to town. The par 5 14th hole at Royal St. George's was named Suez Canal by acclaimed author Bernard Darwin in honor of the burn which crosses the fairway. The bigger complication here is the out of bounds which runs hard up the right side of the hole. In 2011, Dustin Johnson came to the 14th hole two shots behind eventual winner Darren Clark. His run at the Claret Jug came to an end with a push two iron which wound up on the wrong side of the white stakes. Joining the likes of Muirfield, Sunningdale, and Prestwick, lunch in the dining room at Royal St. George's is an attraction unto itself. Seemingly every kind of roasted meat imaginable is on display, the beverages are equally abundant, and the stimulating conversation amongst your fellow visitors and members alike is likely to keep you around the clubhouse far longer than you expected. If you're making another loop around the links after lunch, you may emerge from the clubhouse questioning the wisdom of this decision. The golf riches of the Channel Coast of England stretch far beyond Royal St. George's. Immediately to the north, Prince's Golf Club hosted the 1932 Open Championship, where Gene Sarazen introduced the world to the sand wedge en route to victory. To the south, Royal St. Ports hosted the Open in 1909 and 1920, and would have welcomed many more, were it not for some untimely flooding. When deciding where to play on a golf trip to the Channel Coast of England, this duo should not be overlooked. During the telecast of the Open Championship, you're all but guaranteed to see some spectacular B-roll footage from the famous White Cliffs of Dover. The Cliffs, Dover Castle, and the World War II tunnels are all just a short drive from Royal St. George's and should not be missed during your time on the Channel Coast. Of course, the best way to view the White Cliffs is not necessarily from on top of them, but from the deck of a private boat tour arranged by the H&B Concierge. So those are just a few of the highlights that you'll experience during a visit to Royal St. George's. The Open Championship is sure to inspire thousands of golf travelers to plan a trip to the Channel Coast of England to see it for themselves firsthand. If you happen to be among them, we invite you to visit haversham.com, click on the Let's Talk button, tell us a little about your trip, and we'll take it from there.